Now let's use our newly acquired drawing skill to draw this glass bottle. It's essentially a cylindrical object with a few additional complications. Now, we're not going to worry about drawing the label or the cap or rendering the glass. We're just going to treat the object as if it's white and completely solid. Whenever you have an object that is complicated, you have to start the drawing by doing what I like to call reconnaissance, information gathering. The first piece of information is its general proportion. So we're going to use our proportion measuring tool to measure the object at its widest part, which could be anywhere along the body here. And then we're going to see how many times the width fits into the height of the object. So let's do that. Tip of my pencil goes to one side, thumbnail goes to the other side, and now I'm going to see how many times it fits across. Let's do that again without moving my body back and forth. Okay, one, two, three. Let me do that off camera to make sure it's accurate. One, two, three. It looks like it's actually about three and maybe a quarter. All right, so now I'm gonna draw a rectangle that is the same proportion that I've just measured out. I'm trying not to draw through the camera. Okay, so here's the width of my rectangle. Here are the walls. Always check your verticals. Always check your verticals. And then let's count out. Here's one, here's two, here's three, and then here's four, a quarter's right about here, like this. All right, so I have got, I have my rectangle. And now I know when I draw my bottle that it needs to fit within that rectangular shape. That's the first piece of information. It's actually the same for anything you draw. The first thing I do is do a general proportion check with height to see what the dimensions of my object are. Okay, that's number one. Number two, this object is symmetrical, right? We have the same angle, the same curve on one side as we do the other side. Anytime you have a symmetrical object, a bottle, a vase, the first thing you need to do after you draw the general proportions is to draw what's called a plumb line. A plumb line is a line that runs through the middle of the object this way. Always check your verticals, especially when drawing a plumb line, because you're going to align the symmetry of your object along the plumb line. If the plumb line is crooked, your object is going to tilt or be asymmetrical. All right, draw your plumb line. Now let's start information gathering. What kind of information would be really useful? Well, first of all, how wide exactly is the neck of the bottle? This part right here. We're gonna use a proportion measuring tool to figure that out. We're gonna measure from one side of the bottle at the neck to the other side. So tip of my pencil goes to the neck on the left side, thumbnail goes back and forth until it's on the right side. Then I'm going to see how many times this width fits into this width. So let's do that. One, two, three. Let me do that off camera just to check my information. One, two, and three. A little bit less. Okay, so what does that tell me? What does that tell me? It tells me that the neck here is about one-third the width here. So let's take this distance. This is one. This is about half. Where's one third? This is about one third right here. Right? One, two, three. Let's take it and bring it up and center it on our plumb line. This is what's going to help make our object look symmetrical. So we've got one third the width right smack in the middle of our plumb line. All right, let's take a look at this bottle. What other information might be useful? Well, where the neck ends and the slope of the bottle begins, right? So notice that the neck runs straight, 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 and right about here, it starts to angle outward, right? Where is that point? We're gonna use a proportion measuring tool again to compare this part to this part against the width of the bottle. Let's do that. So tip of my pencil goes to the top of the bottle, and I'm gonna slide my thumb until it lines up with the end of the neck, 
And now I'm going to compare the length of the neck to the width of the bottle. They are almost the same. Let me do that off camera just to check my information. Yep, they're the same. All right, how is that used? Well, we're going to take the width of our bottle here, bring it up, and now we know that our neck needs to run right about to here, like this, right? From here to here. Now we can lightly sketch in the width of the neck. Those are vertical lines for the most part, right? Now we've got some angles, right? We have these kind of sloping angles going from here to here. That can be done using our angle measurement tool. Going this way. Let's do the same thing on the opposite side. Running this way. You can see with a few little measuring techniques, little by little, I'm starting to approach the general shape of the object, right? Now I can start drawing my ellipse on top. Now that's a really small shape. So unless I'm close to it, it's gonna be really hard to measure. These are cases, and there will be cases, where you might have to just estimate the shape, like that, right? Uh, if I want to get more into it, I can figure out the length of this black part if I want. We can do that. So we can take a measurement from here to here and then compare that to the width. It looks like it runs to about three-fourths the width. All right, here's about three-fourths the width. That means that the black part I'm drawing through my camera right now okay, is about that long. Like this. What else? Okay, let's draw the bottom curvature. All right? We're going to use our horizontal alignment tool to line up our pencil with the sides of the curve. Then we're going to drop it down. It looks like it's right about here. Draw a little rectangle. Okay, I'm drawing through the phone right now. And here's the curve of the bottle. Okay. So once you have the general shape, then you can start going in and putting in details. Now we'll talk about detail later. Right now we're just getting kind of basic information. Again, it's not something you guys have to worry about right now. Just to show you that we can start with something really, really simple and little by little through information gathering start adding detail. I'm creating a finished drawing. Everybody, a big part of drawing is breaking things down into simpler, more digestible steps. Uh, so every time I draw, I try to be systematic. I try to start more or less the same way. I start with general proportion, then information gathering, then sketching the object little by little, and then finally working on detail. That will allow you to draw very complicated drawings without a tremendous amount of stress. Because in drawing, it's really easy to get overwhelmed, really easy to just get lost in the detail and lose the big picture. So by breaking things down, by doing work systematically, by approaching the subject systematically little by little, you can tackle even the most complicated drawing problems. The more complex the object, the more measuring I have to do in order to draw it correctly. So let's draw this face. What's the first step? Always the big proportions. So we're going to check with the height and see how many times one fits into the other. Now where is the object at its widest part though? Right about here it looks like. So I'm going to take a measurement here. My pencil goes to one side, thumbnail goes to the other side. Then I'm going to rotate and see how many times it fits. It looks like once and one and a half times. Now let me do that off camera to make sure I actually got it right. One, one and a half times. All right, now I'm going to sketch out a rectangle that has the same proportions. Okay, so here's one, here's one, here's two, half is right about there. 
Let's get the top. Don't forget to sketch, people. Really, really important. All right, it's a symmetrical object. That should trigger in you the irresistible impulse to put in a plumb line. Make sure the plumb line is exactly straight. It's an actual plumb line. And that it's smack dab in the middle of your object. Otherwise, your object will not be symmetrical. All right, what other measurements would be useful? Well, look, it depends. It's up to you. Some people measure a lot, some people measure a little. They start in different orders. Uh, I think probably it would be useful to figure out how wide the neck is relative to the vase at its widest part. So let's take a measurement of the neck, this part here, the ellipse basically, and see how it compares to the width of the vase at the widest part. It looks like it is maybe about two thirds. Two thirds, yeah, that looks like it's about right. All right, so now we're gonna find two thirds on our rectangle right about here, and then center it, center it. All right, is that correct? Let's see. Yeah, that looks like it's about two thirds. All right, make sure it's centered. Is it? Yes, okay. All right, what else would be useful? Well, we have an ellipse here. How do we measure the dimensions of the ellipse? We start from the back of the lips to the front of the lips, and we see how many times this distance fits across this way. Let's do it. So we're gonna go front to back, and it looks like it fits one, two, exactly twice into the width. Good to know, because now I can draw a little rectangle that is One height, this is one height, and two across. All right, what's next? I already have the vertical axis. Now I need my horizontal axis to figure out the four points where my ellipse needs to touch. Let's make sure the horizontal is actually horizontal. Again, hard to draw with the camera. Okay, avoid saucer shapes, avoid sausage shapes, right? Okay, all right. Okay, what else? Well, look, we've got some angles there, right? So we've got curves, but you can see that the neck tapers in a little bit this way. It's curved a little bit, but we can draw an angle straight and then create a little bit of a curvature. Let's do that. Got an angle here going in this way, you've got an angle here. Going in this way. The tricky thing with drawing is that every time you draw something, it'll be a different object, which might require a whole different set of processes. Is that a plural? I guess, right? Um, okay, what else can we figure out? Anyway, the order, the type of measuring used will be different. And look, uh, that's what makes even simple drawing pretty interesting, trying to figure out the correct order in which to measure stuff. Uh, okay, we can figure out where the neck ends and where the actual body of this thing begins. All right, that's a, that might be really useful. How do we do that? Well, we can take a measurement of the object this way, like this, and then turn our pencil vertical to see that, let's do it from here, that it looks like the neck of the object ends at one width, right? So this and this are about the same. Let me do that off camera to make sure that's actually true. Yeah, it looks like it's true. So here's the width. Let's bring it up. And this thing ends right here like this. We have two additional angles. We have an angle running this way and an angle running this way. One, two, again, those things are slightly curved, but we can draw them straight at the beginning and then curve them later, All right? So we've got a curve here. This is where the vase is at its widest part, All right? And then we've got some angles going down this way, like this, going this way going this way. Sorry, I need to move back and forth between the 
drawing and what I'm seeing. All right, what else might be useful? Well, how wide the base is. How wide is that? Let's take a look, take a measurement, measurement of it, and it looks like it's about half the width. Here's the width. Let's center the base right about here, like this. Okay, we have enough information really to more or less finish this object because the next step is to just put in some curves this way, this way, this way. There's a curve running this way, like this, and another curve running this way. Once you have your object sketched in, then you can go back in and either switch to your writer's group if you want. And go ahead and put in your darker lines. So you can see this object's complicated, yes. It's got a complicated shape. But if we nibble at it, if we take little chunks out of it, Little by little, it becomes more and more accessible, easier and easier to draw. If we just started like this, okay, the lips is going this way, and then it's running down this way. Now, once you get enough skill, this might be possible, but chances are you're gonna screw up a lot because look, look what I did. I'm off my plumb line. Okay, uh, so, I'm going to give you guys a bunch of different bottles and vases to draw for your in-class assignment. When you go home, find some bottles and vases of your own and practice drawing them.